Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 5, Lesson 13, Expressions for Rational Numbers. So we're going to go through some of this together. A lot of it is um, some things you're going to do in activities in class today, so I can't go through all that on the video. Um, so you began, first of all, true or false, rational numbers, the sign of each statement is true or false, and then be prepared to explain your reasoning. So what you want to take a look at is if you have a number times a number, and we see a negative number times a negative number, is that negative, and you need to decide, is that true or is that false, and what might you, how, how would you explain that? Here we have 10,000 and we're gonna take away 99,000 and the thing says that it's less than zero. So would you agree that, that that difference is less than zero? Here we're multiplying again, but we're multiplying a fraction uh, and, and a negative number and we're saying it's equal to zero. So would you agree that that is equal to zero or not is the question there. And then finally over here, we see we have some things that look kind of similar. We have a 30 times a negative 80, which we have here as well. There's 30 times a negative 80, right? This has a minus 50. This has a 50 minus that. So a little bit different here, right? So instead of subtracting 50, instead we're subtracting that. So are those actually equal to each other? You need to decide if that's true or is that not true? And then explain your reasoning. This is kind of a key thing with a lot of the lessons that we do in math this year is you being able to explain your thinking, your reasoning. So make sure you can do that on your own and not just say it's true, but why is it true or why is it false? That's really important for you to be able to do. The next activity, your teacher gives you some cards and you need to group them into pairs of expressions that have the same value. So take a look at those cards and then see which ones have the same value. They might look similar, but it doesn't mean they are similar. Okay. So then moving on to the next side, we have 13, uh, three, near and far from zero. So in this activity, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here because it's really small on my paper here. It wants you to, for each set of values of A, for A and B, evaluate the expressions and record your answers in the table, okay? So they give us a value for A, this is what A is, B is, and let's say for example, I wanna find out what negative A is. That means I take a negative sign and I put that in front of the value of A, which is negative one half, and I need to rewrite that. So minus and a minus a half is the same as a positive one half. So again, I'm sorry, it's really small, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here, okay? And I'm just trying to set up my equation so you can see my thinking, all right? Moving here, so going down negative A. Well, that one is a, is a um, put the negative sign in front for the negative, and the a value is a half, so I can just write that in there, no problem. Here I have a negative, a minus, minus six, so it would look like this. It's like a minus, minus six. If I'm thinking about it as a negative a value, that's the same as a positive six right there, okay? For the negative four b, well b has a value of six, so this is like saying negative four times six, and negative four times six is negative 24. Here, we do negative four times b, which is negative six, and negative four times a negative six is gonna be a positive 24. Here, we go negative four times b, which is negative one half. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and four over two is simply two, okay? And so you need to do the rest of these here as you go through those. I'm gonna write down my solutions real quick. Um, just to get you an idea of what's, what your solution should look like, right? So this becomes um, six and a half. This becomes negative six and a half. Here we have five and a half. Moving to A divided by B. This one is a little tr trickier, right? You're gonna do your negative one half. Oops, negative one over two. And divided by B is divided by negative B actually and b is six, so we're gonna do divided by negative six, so that becomes rewritten as negative one half times reciprocal, negative one over six, <laughs> really small print, so sorry. And so negative times a negative is a positive, one times one is one, and six times two is 12. You end up with positive one twelve, okay? For that one there. Over here, you end up with the same thing because you have a negative and a negative is a positive and the a value in this one is positive. So because the a is positive on this row and that's negative and we're subtracting it there, we end up still with a positive 1 12th and here we end up with just a negative 12. When you square it, negative 1 half squared is a positive 1 4th 
1 half squared is a positive 1 fourth, and negative 6 squared is a positive 36. To the third power, 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. When I do a negative number times a negative times a negative, I get back to the negative value, negative 216. And negative 1 half, again, gets me back to a negative value, negative 1 eighth. Okay, so a lot of a lot of numbers there, a lot of computation to do. That takes a little bit more time. So hopefully you got that taken care of in class, well, your class, your teacher, your partners, and there you go. Now let's take a look at what they want you to do. Okay, for number two, when a equals negative a half and b equals six. All right, so here is number two, this row. Looking at this row here, which one has the highest, or the largest value? So looking at our row here, our largest value is 216. That's going to be when b cubed. Which one has the smallest value? I have a negative 24. That seems to be the smallest one. So we're going to say negative 4b. It's the smallest value there. Closest to 0, well, I have a half. That's pretty close. I have a fourth, even closer. And I have 1 12th, even closer. So we would say a divided by negative b is the one that's closer there. Okay, number three is looking at this row right here for number three. So which one has the largest value? The largest value is going to be 24, so that's going to be at negative 4b. The smallest value is probably going to be negative 216, so b cubed. And the one closest to zero, again we have 1 12th here, and that's closer than a fourth, so we would still say a divided by a negative b. And then for number four, looking at this row right here, which one has the largest value again? I have a positive 36, that seems to be the largest, so that's gonna be a squared. Smallest value, um, I have a negative 12, and that looks like the smallest value, so we do a divided by negative b. And closest to zero, I have a negative one eighth compared to negative half. This one's closest to zero. So it's gonna be B to the third. It'll be closest to zero in this case here. Okay, and that's that whole activity there. Let's take a look at seagulls and sharks again. Zoom out here. So the seagull has a vertical position A and a shark has a vertical position B. Draw and label a point on the vertical axis to show the vertical position of each new animal. We know this is zero here, and so over here we're gonna be at negative values down here and positive values up there, okay? What's interesting is how they, how they phrase these things. It says a dragonfly at D where D equals negative B, okay? so. B, let's say, let's pretend that B had a value of, let's just call this um, negative 2, okay? Let's pretend B is at negative 2. If B was at negative 2, and I'm going to say D is at negative, negative B, that would be like putting in minus and minus 2, which would give you a positive 2, right? So what that means is that the dragonfly, whatever the distance here is, is going to be the same distance but this direction in the positive way and then we can put a little dot right here and call this d for our dragonfly okay jellyfish at j where j equals 2b now again i'm making up a number just to help us see here so if i put 2 times b and b is negative 2 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 4. So in essence, I'm going to double the distance here to go down to j. And j is going to be down here for a jellyfish. An eagle, e, or e equals 1 fourth of a. All right, so let's pretend that we had this at about 2. If I did this again, maybe this was about 4. And maybe our eagle up here is at like maybe six. Let's pretend six positive, or our seagull's at positive six. So our eagle would be one fourth of six. And so one fourth of six can reduce down to three over two, which is equal to about one and a half. 
So in terms of our scale here, our eagle is going to be about one and a half. So if that was six, about, and this we said was a positive two before, one and a half is going to be less than the dragonfly actually. So we're going to put our eagle right here. A clownfish is at a, a negative a over two. Now we said our a was about six. We're just again estimating. So we're going to say negative six over two, and that becomes a negative three. So our clownfish is going to be somewhere between the jellyfish, which was negative four about, and the uh, the shark. So we can put our clownfish right here for C. The vulture is going to be A plus B. Now we thought our A was about 6 and our B was about negative 2. So 6 plus negative 2 is going to be a positive 4. And so this was our 1.5 eagle, our dragonfly at 2. And so we can put our vulture right here at about 4. And the goose, we're going to do 6 minus a minus 2. <clears throat> and 6 minus and minus 2 is equal to 8. And so our goose is going to go up 2 more to here. And there's our goose at about, and we're just saying 8. Okay. So that's an idea of where your animals are at. And that's the idea behind today's lesson. So make sure you put those numbers in the right place and watch your signs to see if you're doing it the right way. Let's take a look at tonight's homework. A coffee maker's direction says to use two tablespoons of ground coffee. Okay, so we have two tablespoons of coffee for every six ounces of water. How much coffee should you use for 33 ounces of water? So we'll set this up as a ratio, two coffee over six water equals, I'm not sure how many coffee, we'll call that X over 33 ounces of water. I can reduce the two six to a one third. And then from there, we can cross multiply. And 33 times one is three, 33, sorry. And three times X is three X. So let's rewrite this over here as 33 equals three X. We solve by dividing both sides by three. And the number of uh, coffee I should use is gonna be 11 tablespoons. B. A runner is running 10, a 10 kilometer race. It takes her 17.5 minutes to reach the 2.5 kilometer mark. At that rate, how long will it take her to run the whole race? So in this case here, she's doing 2.5 kilometers and she does that in 17.5 minutes. That's her current rate. She has to go a total of 10 kilometers. And we want to know the time, what's it going to take to do that? So a couple things I could do. I could cross multiply like I did before, or I can look and see, is there a relationship that gets me from here to there quickly? This is two and a half. You might recognize a two and a half times four gets you to 10. So four times 17.5 would be my solution. So let's do that 17.5 times four, and that gets you 70. So how long will it take her? It will take 70 minutes. Again, you could cross multiply if you chose to. You need to put 2.5x equals 175. Then you divide and you get the same answer. The price of an ice cream cone is $3.25, but it costs $3.51 with tax. What is the sales tax rate? So let's find out how much that tax was. We know you spent a total of 351 and the initial cost was 325. So if we subtract, we find out that you paid 26 cents in tax. Okay? So the tax right now equaled 0.26. So we want to find out what percentage of the ice cream cone that was. So we can do 325. Normally we take the, the sales amount. We multiply that by the tax percent, and that gives you our tax 
costs. So here we have 3.25. We don't know our tax, we'll call that T, and it's gonna be equal to 0.26, which we just found. So we divide both sides. And we find out that our tax is gonna be equal to 0 0.08, which is the same as 8%. Okay, number three. We're gonna solve and just evaluate here. So negative 22 plus a five. All right, when the signs are different, we find the difference. 22 minus five is 17. And we keep this sign with a greater absolute value. So we're gonna keep it as a negative. So we have negative 17. For subtraction, we add the opposite. So again, I have negative 22 plus five, which is what I just had, same problem, there it is. Here we're going to multiply negative 22 times a negative 5, so I'll have a positive solution because a negative times a negative is a positive, and 22 times 5 is 110. And then finally here we have negative 22 divided by 5, so I'll still have a negative answer there, and that becomes negative 4.4 as my solution there. Come back side. Because two students are now working on the same problem. A box of laundry soap has 25% more soap in its new box. The new box holds two kilograms. How much did the old box hold? Here's how Jada set it up, and here's how Lynn set it up. The question is, do you agree with either of them and explain your reasoning? Okay, so think of it this way. You have a box of soap, right? That's your original. We can divide that into 25, two quarters, right? This is my original amount here of soap. my original now what's going to happen is to do 25 percent more we take one of these squares and we're going to duplicate it right there that becomes the additional amount right that is my 25 percent more from the original my original was this amount and i broke that into 25 percent segments and i added another 25 percent so i need something that looks like that okay the new box holds two kilograms so we know the whole thing is gonna be now two kilograms there, okay? So let's see what I have here. In this case, Jade is saying that two, two kilograms is gonna be 100%. Well, the new box is now two, two kilograms, but the new box is 100% plus a 25%, which is 125%. So when you look at Lynn, Lynn has the two kilograms marked here at 125 percent which makes more sense so we're going to say we're going to agree with lynn in this case here because her setup shows that the 125 percent is 100 plus 25 to get to this value or the amount of soap in the new container okay that's the idea there Number five, the value of x is negative one fourth. Order these expressions from least to greatest. So let's put them in there. This one here will be negative one fourth. This one becomes one minus a negative one fourth. That becomes adding, so we end up with one and one fourth. Here, we'll do negative one fourth minus one. So that's adding the opposite. So that becomes a negative one and one fourth. And this becomes a negative one divided by negative one fourth. So we multiply by the reciprocal and we end up with a positive four. So in order from least to greatest, our least is here. So we can call that A, we can call this B, we can call this C, and we can call this uh, D, right? That's our order, A, B, C, D. Okay, here are four expressions that have the value of negative one over two. These are all equal the same thing. Write five expressions, a sum, a difference, a product, a quotient, and one that involves at least two operations that have the value of negative three-fourths. Okay, so here's a sum, just a couple examples here. Um, if you did negative one-fourth plus a negative two-fourths, your denominator stays the same, and you have one plus two is three, and they're both negative, so that's a good sum. For a difference, you could do a negative two-fourths minus one-fourth, 
And because I would add the opposite, I get two plus one, which becomes three fourths. In terms of a product, I could do one half times a negative three over two. I get a negative three on the top and a four on the bottom. That works out just fine. And in terms of a quotient, I could flip that around and do one half divided by negative two over three. Just taking this one and flipping it around so it looks like that. Okay. And you can do the other one on your own. That's it for today. See you next time.